greet each one in Jesus' name this morning. Welcome each one to the service. Each one of the visitors, glad to, to, to have each one of you here. <clears throat> we continue to worship the Lord. This morning, let's open our Bibles to Jeremiah chapter 8. I'd like to read verse 22. It says, Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then is not the health of the daughter of my people recovered? I've titled the message, Church, the Balm, of Gil- the balm in Gilead. <clears throat> you know, the church should be that healing among this nation. It should be that balm in Gilead for those who are sick. Just like in that time, the balm in Gilead, their, their, their place of medicine, the place they would go to for their salves and their, their medicines. May this be the church this morning. May that be the place that those who are sick and hurting can come to and find help. <clears throat> John 13, verse 35 says, By this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you have love one for another. You know, as we think of the church, the brotherhood, <clears throat> working together and what the church should be, well, I think that verse right there just describes it very well. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you have love one to another. You know, by this shall all men know that I belong to God and that you belong to God because we can love each other. You know, that's something that the world has a lot of trouble in doing, is loving each other. You know, even, even families have trouble loving each other. Husband and wives have trouble loving each other. You know, and, and we see it in churches today as well. But that is what Jesus told us. As that's how, that's how the world around us and how God is going to see us as being one of his disciples if we're able to love each other. I think that's one of the key points to keeping the church a balm in Gilead. If we can't have this love and keep this love alive, we have nothing to offer. How can we help someone we don't love? How can we be that balm or that salve for someone that we have no care for? <clears throat> By this shall all men know that you're my disciples. That love, how important it is to have that love in our hearts. <clears throat> you know, and as we mentioned earlier, in a couple evenings ago, that it's not what I can get out of it that makes it lovely. It's what I can give to it that puts the love in it. You know, if I'm in church for all I can get out of church, that's not love. We're, we're taking advantage. We're robbing the church of love is what we're doing. Love is when I come to church and I want to give all the love I have for the brothers and sisters of the church. I want to give all the love that I have for that hurting soul that has walked in this morning. Looking for hope. Looking for love. You know, if I'm here to get what I can get from church... That person will leave this place not feeling any love. That that person will leave this place wondering who God is. Because they come to the balm of Gilead and did not receive any medicine. You know, it's just like when 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 you come down with pneumonia and you go to the hospital, you expect to receive some medicine of some sort or another. You expect to get some care. That's what you go there for. And that's the same, the lost Those who are hurting, when they see the church, they see hope, they see health, they see help. That's what they come to the church for. And when they walk in here and they don't experience that love and they don't experience that help in their lives, it's just like when I go to the hospital and they put me in a hospital room and don't show up for five or six hours, you know, and I'm here hacking away with pneumonia. And they should have been there, you know, a few minutes after I got there. You know, that is the picture of the church without love. <clears throat> and you know, the, the 
serious thing about it is, is when we don't have that love, it's largely the same feeling as we go to the hospital and don't receive service. And you know what that is? I don't think I'll ever go there again. You know, I don't think I'll ever go to that hospital again. And that's exactly, you know, we hear that. I don't think I'll ever go to that church again. You know, and sometimes it comes out of a, a carnal heart, but sometimes it comes out of a heart that where they miss the love. You know, shame on us as God's people, but we can, we can come to that. And I, I don't know where you are as brothers and sisters. From what I see, you love each other and you got love. You've sure treated us very well, and I, I want to believe you treat everybody that way and have that love. But I want to encourage you to continue that. Continue to love each other. Continue to build each other up. Continue to love those who come in. Because that is how men will know that you are Jesus' disciple. When they come in and they feel that love. You know what I'm talking about. You can walk into a church and you can feel that love. And you know the other way around. You can walk into a church and everybody kind of stops and looks at you and stands there. And like, you know, well, what on earth are you here for? I mean, did you get lost? You know, they just, there ain't much love in that. You've probably been in situations like that. I mean, you go, you go places and you probably faced that before. Okay, that is what we, we as a people of God, yeah, I'm not saying when somebody new walks in the, in the back door that the whole church jumps up and runs back there. You know, that can be intimidating. But show them love. Let them feel that love. Let them feel that they're wanted, that they're needed here, and that you want to help them. Let your brothers and sisters, the members of this church, know that you want them, that they are needed here, that you truly love them. You love the input that they have in your life, and, and, and you're willing to give the input from your life to their life. That is the love of Jesus Christ. And when we can have that in the church, and I want to believe that you brothers and sisters are experiencing that here. I sense that love among, among you. And keep that up. Because that is the life of this church here this morning. Is when you can keep that love alive, even though you may, because I'm sure you are as human as we are in Texas, sometimes it's hard to love a brother or sister. Sometimes they do something that kind of grinds us pretty hard, and it's hard to really show them love. Love them anyway. Love them anyway. What does it, what does this, here, the balm of Gilead, put some salve on that sore. You know, rub love on that. Fix that. Don't sit there and not love a brother or a sister because they said something or done something that hurts your feelings or that you thought really was, it maybe, you know, kind of was abusive to you. I mean, really, who are we? Let's love. I mean, I've been there before myself, brothers and sisters. I, I'm talking from experience. I have been there before. I'm, I'm that carnal that sometimes things are said or done that really they cut to the quick. They hurt. And it's hard to love. But I've found that when I continue loving that brother at the, or sister at the, end of the, at the end of the day, I have a greater appreciation for them. So let's allow men to know that we are the disciples of Jesus Christ. Let's love one another. Build each other up. John 15 gives the thought that when we do that, let's turn to John 15, that our joy can be full. <clears throat> John 15 verses 9 through 14. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, as, as, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you, that, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends, if you do whatsoever I command you. That is a command of Jesus Christ, that we love one another. And he, said, he says, if we obey that commandment, our joy will be full. How many of us here this morning wants our joy to be full? Every one of us do. 
You know, that, that's, that is a joy when we can have a, a full joy. You know, we, we don't like to be going around sad. We don't like to be with sad people. You know, if you're with somebody day in and day out and they just kind of got a humdrum look on their face and they're never happy about anything, they always have something negative to say about everything you say. They always have something negative to say about every job they do or any, you know, there's some of those people out there. And, you know, that'll wear you down. You know, nothing you do pleases them. Nothing that you say pleases them. You can't do enough to please them. There's no joy in that. Jesus said that if you want your joy to be full, love. And, you know, what? I think even with those people, we don't have to allow that to drag us down. And, you know, the beautiful thing about love is, is it's contagious. Love is contagious. Love them, people. Show them how to love. The trouble is, is they've probably got into a rut to where they've just, they don't know how to love anything anymore because they've got so filled up with self. And we all know how that is. Fill yourself up with self and all you got is self. And then what do you do? You're, it's self. Everything. You're alone. You're by yourself because you're self. Show them love. Show them how to kill self. Love will kill self. It'll get rid of it. Love is about others and not about me. <clears throat> Jesus commands us to love one another. Right here he said this is his commandment. Abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment. That you love one another as I have loved you. Well, we, we looked at Jesus' love for us last evening. He gave it all for us. He's asking us to do that for our brothers and sisters in the church. For all of those around us that we love each other enough. We're willing to give our all. You know, I'm willing to sacrifice some of my reputation, if you will. Or am, am I willing to do that for my brothers and sisters? Because sometimes we have to. There's been times when we have to sacrifice some of our reputation, so to speak, if we have a reputation. I don't know exactly how to, how to, how to put that. Yes, we all have a reputation, but some, sometimes, at least for me, I find I get a little self wrapped up in that reputation. And you know, maybe a brother or sister commits a sin. You know, and, and my tendency is, is to, well, okay, that I don't know. I, I don't even know who they are. They're not, a part of, they're not a part of the church I'm a part of. I don't know who they are. I don't want them to affect my reputation. I don't want it to get out that a brother or sister has committed this sin in the church that I'm a part of. Well, let me ask us this. How, how far or how high am I above that? You know, how high am I above being that sinner that commits? I'm, I'm only one step away from it. It's only because of the love of God and the love of my brothers and sisters that I'm not doing the same thing. And what reputation do I have? You know, I should only care about one reputation is that all men know that I'm a disciple of Jesus Christ. I should have one reputation in mind that all men know that I love the sinner and I hate the sin. I shouldn't, be a, I shouldn't be ashamed of the sinner because that's who I was. And that's for every one of us here this morning. There's nobody here this morning that's, that has committed a sin greater than the next. Not at all. There's nobody here this morning that's committed any sins greater than I've committed. Sin is sin. Somehow we want to categorize that, brothers and sisters. Love doesn't categorize. Love puts it like it is in black and white. Sin is sin, and, and, and holiness is holiness. You either live for God and live in holiness, or you are a sinner. I don't care if it's just a simple little thing of telling a white lie, or if it's fornication, it's sin. And they are both sin before God. They are both bring condemnation before God. And the only way that we can live in victory is to have love, the love of Jesus Christ in our hearts flowing among us. To where when we do see that struggling brother, when we do see that uh, sinner walk through the door that's needing help, we, we've got the answer there for him. It's not my answer, it's Jesus Christ. This is what you need. 
You need Jesus Christ in your life. You need his love in your life. You know, I think if we could just get on fire and get the love of Jesus Christ in our life, it would take care of our problems, brothers and sisters. It would bring the church together. It would put life into the church. It would put strength into the feet of the church, and we would jump up, and we would go about the Lord's work because we have love. We recognize the love that Jesus had for us. He died for us because we are his friends. He says that here. We're his friends. He died for us. He gave his life. And you know what? He gave his life before we were his friends. He gave his life for you and I while we were yet his enemy. While we yet hated him. That is the love that he's wanting you and I to have for each other. God help us that we can have that love. Let's turn to Romans chapter 12. Romans 12, I'll read the first 10 verses. It says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we being many are one body in Christ, and every one members one of another. Having then the gifts deferring according to the grace that is given to us, Whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. Or ministry, let us wait on our ministering. Or he that teacheth on teaching. Or he that exhorteth on exhortation. He that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence. He that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil, cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love. In honor, preferring one another. You know, we could continue on through that whole chapter. It's full of it. It's full of how, how the church should, should work out this. How the church should live out love. You know, if we have that love for the brotherhood, we're not going to say, oh, well, he's, he's not doing this right, or, he's, or she's not doing that right, because she's not doing it the way I do it. It says right here, we're all given different gifts. Just because this brother's not a good teacher or that sister's, you know, whatever, not uh, not like you think she should be. That doesn't mean she's not filling her place all the time. Now, yes, it can be. Somebody can. I understand that. We can't have them that they're, they're just, like we say, you know, they're a bench warmer. <clears throat> we, don't, we don't need bench warmers in churches. We need people who are willing to use their gift, even though it may be that one talent. Don't go bury it. You know how the how the the uh, the the uh, master was going to leave, and he left his servants with talents. You know, he gave one five, and all the way down to the one got one. Well, everybody but that one, that one didn't use his. He went and buried it because you know his master was he was very he was he expected too much. He thought, you know, brothers, if we have love, we're going to give what we have. It may you may you may just be that uh, what does it say here? You you may be the uh, the exhorter. You know you may you may see you may see areas that I'm struggling in. You may see areas I need some help in. You're the brother that comes and exhorts all the time. You know somehow that brother we kind of go oh, okay all right no 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 uh uh-uh. no he's always picking on me. He's always picking on me. We, you know, we need those brothers in the church. I don't know. You probably have one here. I don't know if you do or not. But if you do, don't look down on that brother. Thank him for it. Maybe you got a sister that's that way. You know, it's always coming up to a sister. Hey, you, are you really sure that what you're doing is like you should do it? Thank them for that, that they're watching out for your soul. You need those. 
You know, and you got the one that's just always preaching at you all the time. He's always trying to teach you a lesson about something. You know, you do something. He wants to stop and give you a whole line about, you know, the, the, the morals behind what you just done. That's good, brothers and sisters. Love that. That's good for us. We need to have that kind of purpose in living our lives because that's what makes church church right there. That's what puts life in the church is when we can have that love for each other that, yes, I am, I am free and clear enough. I love you enough that I feel comfortable coming and tell you, look, you know what you're doing has got a great moral lesson into, in it. Let, let's learn what it is. Because y'all know as well as I do, the life that we live can soon become humdrum and just everything happens and falls into place and has no meaning. And that's not the life of a child of God. What we do has meaning. It has purpose. There's a reason that you had a blowout going to work this morning. Who did you meet when you had that blowout? Somebody stopped in to help you and they were struggling. Oh, that's just coincidence. You know, and that was not coincidence. That was divine timing of God. You were to meet that person and God knew the only way that you were to meet him was to blow your tire out. So that's what happened because, you know, we won't stop. You know, how much does that picture the lives we live? We won't stop unless God slaps us off the road. You know, blows our tire out or something. Let's be a people that have a purpose. Let's be a people that loves to the point that all men feel the love of God when we walk out. <clears throat> it says, having then gifts deferring according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, prophesy. Minister, let us wait on our ministry, teaching, teach. Exhort, exhortation, giving. You know, you got some of those brothers and sisters that just, you just wonder where they get it. They just, they can't quit giving. I'm sure you probably experience that here. And if you don't, I encourage you givers to get up and start giving because that will keep life in the church. You know, we experience it some in commerce. I don't know. I mean, you know, you can kind of expect who they are, but you don't know who they are all the time. But they give. You'll walk out to your car and there's a, there's a you know, a, a fruit basket or a basket of cookies or something, you know, some, you know, loaf of bread with a note and it don't have to be nothing great. Sometimes you just walk out there and there's a note laying on the seat of your vehicle and just some encouraging words. Somebody saw that you were struggling. Somebody saw that they needed to give you some courage. Do that for your brothers and sisters. Show them that love. That is what will get them back up on their feet. That's what will give them courage to face the next day. I don't know how many times I've come out to the vehicle half discouraged. And there is some little token like that. And you're like, wow, I can go on now. There's somebody here that does appreciate what I'm doing. There's somebody here that does appreciate the efforts I put into this, even though it was a total failure, at least what I thought. You know, we need that courage. I encourage you to do that for your ministry as well. You as a congregation, do that for your ministry. They need that. Even though they may sit up here and look like they've got it all put together, they may come up here, you know, and preach, and it just, you know, looks like it. They struggle. They struggle. I don't even have to ask them. I know they do. <clears throat> Sometimes the load gets heavy. Now, we're going to touch on that a little bit more. I'm not going to spend much time on that right now because we are going to get pretty deep into that later on. <clears throat> but let's have that love. Whatever gift God has given you, don't look at the brother over here that's great at teaching and wish you could be a teacher. You know, don't, don't look at the, the sister over here that just is quick to, you know, just notice somebody that's discouraged and down and, you know, she just got the gift to really lift people up. Don't look at her. You may be the one who's good at baking bread. Bake the bread. Give the bread out. That's needed as well. You may be the one who's good at sewing some clothes, you know. Make some clothes and give to that young mother that you just see coming in every Sunday, you know, and you can see that she's been crying that morning because she's been struggling getting everybody ready to come to church. She needs a little help. Give her some help, you know. Be that one. You don't have to be the one to always give her all the encouraging words. Just give her some gifts. Give her some love that way. Same for us brothers, you know. Be that, just that simple, very simple ways of showing love. That's what strengthens the church, brothers and sisters. We're in a battle. We're in a battle. 
We need that courage. We need that strength. We need that help from each other. I don't have the power of my own. If it would be me by myself, I'll tell you, I would have done burnout years and years ago. Even with the entire congregation, there's been times that I felt like I was running on a, a hairline and it was done ready starting to fray. You know, sometimes we just get faced with burnout. Sometimes we get all we can take. You don't realize what them little bitty, you think a pack of cookies, what is that? You think a little note, well, what's that going to do? I'll tell you, sometimes it's patched the phrase on that hairline for me. Sometimes it's patched those phrase up and it was able to hold. And throughout those gifts, those encouraging words, courage builds back up and we're able to continue on. <clears throat> I know I'm making church sound awful. It's not. It's beautiful. But I want, I'm just trying to show you how to make it more of a blessing for yourselves. If we understand the battle we're in here in this sin-cursed earth, then we can understand more clearly how to encourage each other. And that's one thing the world is missing, and that's love. We need that true love for each other. Appreciation. Make sure that the brotherhood knows that you appreciate them, that you love them. <clears throat> and one great way of that, and let's just turn to Ephesians chapter 6. And that's to pray for him. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18. It says, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Praying always with all prayer and supplication. I cannot stress this point enough, brothers and sisters. I think this is one of our weakest points in the churches is we don't pray for each other. You know, we can look through and we don't have time to, but as I was studying this, looking through the different accounts, the apostles, that was something they kept reminding the churches that they were helping, the churches they started. You know, they hear they were faithful. That would be one of the first things, you know, I'm praying for you daily. I remember you continually in my prayers. You know, I'm praying night and day. I pray without ceasing, and it, you know, they just go on and on. They pray for it. Brothers and sisters, is that the prayers that we're offering up for each other? You know, that is what we need so much. We need the prayers of each other. Your ministry needs your prayers. <clears throat> As a laity, they're in the battle in the very heat of it. They need your prayers. The laity needs the prayers of the ministry. Each other, we need to pray for each other. In prayers and supplications made for all saints. We need to pray for every, every, every person in here needs our prayers. They need your prayers. When we can have that love that it drives us to our knees for our brother or sister. You know, maybe we know a brother is going to be facing a struggle. Maybe we know a brother is going to be facing a battle or a sister is going to be facing a battle or a struggle or something hard in their lives. Do we stop and pray for them? Or do we wish them well and continue on? You know, so often that's where I find myself. You know, I'll wish them well, the, the best. The Lord be with you, you know. But then I go on and I forget all about it. And I don't never utter a prayer for them. You know, God help us. Is there any wonder why we're struggling and falling under the load? Because we're not praying. That is what kept the church. When it, when it started, that's what kept the church on its feet. That's what kept the church faithful was the prayers of the faithful. And that's what will keep the church today faithful is the prayers of the faithful. We need to have that love for each other that we can pray for each other at all costs, whatever. There's nothing at all wrong as you're going through your day and a brother or sister calls you up and tells you something. Stop right there and pray about it. Stop right there and pray about it. Be quick about it. Pray without ceasing. I think that says that, it says that, I think, in uh, 1 Thessalonians 5. Pray without ceasing. Don't stop your prayers. Have a prayerful attitude as you go about the day. That's so important. Have a prayerful attitude for the church as you go about the day. That means as you go about the day, 
You continually will, you, as, as you think of things, you will whisper a prayer for that brother or sister. I don't know how many times I've heard a brother or sister or somebody saying, you know, they were facing a battle sometime or another. You know, here's somebody else saying, you know, I just felt you needed prayer, so I just stopped and prayed for you. You know, I've, I've had brothers tell me that. Maybe send me a message say, I don't know what you're facing, but you know, I just, I felt you needed some prayer. And I'm like, wow, how on earth did they know I was struggling about it? They didn't. They did not know that. God laid it on their heart that I was struggling. That, that little hairline was about to, 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 to fray in half. I needed some help. And somebody heard that. They were in tune with God. They heard that and they prayed. Brothers, that is where the strength is at right there. That's where the strength is at. Have your ear tuned to that still small voice of God. When you feel prompted to pray for somebody, stop right there and pray for them, brothers. That wasn't just coincidence that your mind thought of that. That is the Spirit of God working in your life through your love for your brothers and sisters, through your love for God. He is telling you that one of your fellow laborers is struggling. God don't tell you what they're struggling about. He just says pray. God says pray. You don't need to know what it's about. God knows what it's about. That's when it's beautiful. Is when we are prompted to pray, we stop and pray. It'll strengthen your faith and it'll save a brother or sister. I encourage you, I'm sure you're praying for each other, but I encourage you to do it more. Put more, put more effort into that, more time into that. You don't have to know whether, I mean, it may be, you may think that the brother that you're prompted to pray for, you may think he's the strongest, most stable, or sister is the most strongest, stable sister or brother in the church. You may think that that's the brother or sister who has never committed a sin, you know, that you've ever seen. They're, they're true. They're at one with God. You know, they got a heart after God. But yet you're being prompted to pay, pray for them. Get on your knees and pray for them. There's nobody the devil would rather have than them. When he can knock the pillars out of the church, he's got them. Get on your knees and pray. Let's turn to Thessalonians chapter uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. First Thessalonians 1 verses 2 and 3. It says, we give thanks to God always for you all, making mention of you in our prayers, remembering without ceasing, remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love and patience of hope in, in our Lord Jesus Christ in the sight of God and our Father. <clears throat> you know, this is a call to us as leaders in the church. We give thanks to God always for you, making mention of you in our prayers. To the leaders here in this church, remember to do that for, for, for the laity. Remember to do that for the brothers and sisters, the members of this church. They need your prayers. They need, they need your encouragement. They need that stability that they find through you as a ministry here. <clears throat> and I'm speaking freely because I, 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 I do, I mean, I know you as a ministry, but I don't know, uh, you know, I, I don't know how you operate here. So it's not like I think y'all got a problem in this or nothing. I think you've been doing this. It's, again, an encouragement for you as a ministry to continue this. Continue to show this kind of love for your brotherhood. Continue to show this kind of love for your young people. They need that stability, that strength in their life. They need to know that you as a ministry care about the struggles and trials that they face. 
Because, you know, it's, it's easy for ch in churches, it's easy for the ministry to be up here and the laity to be somewhere down here, you know. You know what I'm talking about. Kind of separate this. We as a ministry are untouchable. We never sin. We never do anything wrong. Don't ever question me. I'm a preacher. Preachers can't sin. That's a bunch of hogwash. That's a sin in itself. Preachers are men just like y'all. We're humans. We make mistakes. We need your prayers, as I've already said. So as you look at your ministry, look at them as that. They're a man just like you. They've been called with a lot greater responsibility than you have. But they're still a man. Put yourself, you as a lady, put yourself with twice the responsibility, you guys. You're getting close to where your ministry are at. So as you, as you as a ministry, look at your laity. Keep that love. Stay down there on the level with them. Stay down there on the level with them. And I believe you have been doing that. I mean, I have not sensed no separation. I've actually really appreciated what I've seen here. But I do know I've only been here for a few days. And I haven't seen it all. But I think the heart of these three brothers are to be that. Have that love. Have that respect for you as a laity. But I encourage you to thank God always. That's what he starts out here. He says, we give thanks to God always for you all. Making mention of you in our prayers. You know, that's something that uh, I've not done well with, but I've tried to do that. Think about the brothers and sisters, especially if I know that they're going through any heartache, any trial or anything, to mention them by name. That, is, uh, that does so much, brothers, especially for us as a ministry. Remember them by name. You're given the charge of this flock. Know them by name. When there's a need, pray for them by name. <clears throat> you know, I'll never forget. Some years back, we had uh, some struggles there in commerce. And a bishop committee come in. Actually, Brother Devon was on that. Brother Rudy Overholt and uh, Brother Merv Graver. I'll never forget what Brother Rudy done when he was there. I don't know if Devon remembers that, but we had a church calendar, and they stayed in our, at our place and uh, come in in the morning, there, Brother Rudy's sitting there with his church calendar and his notepad, and he's going through it, and he's writing, he's, he's there writing. And then he asked me, is this all the, all the brothers in the church? You know, is this, is this all of them in here? He was writing down every one of our names. He said, I'm going to go back home, and I want to pray for each one of you individually. You know, that struck me. I was just a young minister then. <clears throat> Didn't have no idea what I was doing, hardly. And he done that, and that just challenged me. It's like, you know, that, that is what we need right there. He loved each, even though he didn't, he didn't know any of us well. He loved us. He cared about what we were going through. He knew we were going through a battle, a struggle, and he was going to take the time and pray for each one of us individually. You know, ministry and myself as well, let's take that challenge. Let's remember our members, our children, young people. Pray for them. To the laity, let's turn to 1 Thessalonians 5. 1 Thessalonians 5, verses 12 through 15. It says, And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish, and admonish you, and to esteem them very highly in, loves, in love for their work's sake, and be at peace among yourselves. 
Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them, <clears throat> warn them that are unruly. Warn them that are unruly. Comfort the feeble-minded and support the weak. Be patient toward all men. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. So to you as a laity, it says right here, I beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you. You as a congregation, you have a responsibility to know your ministry. Know what they're facing. Know the struggles. They have struggles. They have heartaches. They have trials that they face. Pray for them in that. You know, know them well enough to know. You don't have to know what they're struggling with. They probably struggle with things that you never have any idea that they're struggling with. You don't have to know what it is. But know them well enough that you can look at them and tell they're struggling. Know them well enough. When you look at them, you can see that weight that's hanging on them. Something is, something's over them. They're in the battle. And they may not be able to, because there's lots of things, brothers and sisters, there's lots of things that your ministry do here that they, that they cannot say across this pulpit. There are struggles that they're helping a brother or sister with. And how many, you know, how many of you brothers and sisters want them to come up here and say, hey, you know, I've been, uh, I've been helping, a, I hope there's nobody that's named Leroy here. I don't want to be naming anybody here. But I've been, we've been just struggling with Brother Leroy because he just, he just, he's really struggling and just don't seem to be breaking through with it, you know. They can't come up here and say that. I mean, Brother Leroy would probably jump up and run out of the church. You know, it's breaking, they can't do that. So there's so many things. They're there in the heat of it, in the battle. You know, they're struggling with this. They're wishing that they could say this to you because Brother Leroy is just not coming through with it. He just, he's, he's not making any steps. He just don't seem to have that desire. They're there with him. You know, and they may have seen one or two o'clock this morning. I mean, I expect they have. I know I've done that. You know, you're still at it at one or two o'clock in the morning. And, you know, you got to get up the next morning at pretty near regular time or everybody's going to wonder what's happening. And then they're dragging through the day. You know, they, they haven't had but a few hours of sleep last night. They're dragging through the day. <clears throat> Brothers, when you see them do that, just get on your knees right there. They need your prayers. They need your prayers. They, they're in a battle between, and it's not an earthly battle. It's, it's a spiritual battle. It's not a battle of flesh and blood. They're in a battle with the devil. He is the devil is out for all the souls that are here this morning. And that's what their their job is to protect y'all from the devil. And you know, it's not just them alone. Y'all got your responsibility too. But they are to look out for you as though they give an account for you. So when you see your ministering brethren under the load, pray for them. Pray for them. You know, and again, for you as a, a laity, you may, you may sense at times, you know, your ministry or your ministry are, are under a load. And maybe when the load gets heavy enough, and I don't know these three brethren well enough to know how they do, but for some of us, when we get under the load to breaking point, and we know we can't break, we know, you know, we, we just cannot give in to break. It almost seems like it's going to look like pride rise up. You're going to see your ministry set their feet down and back in and hold it now. They're, they're just, they're right there and you can say, oh, well, you know, they're just all proud about this. Folks, if that's where you see your ministry and that's not their regular tendency, get on your knees and stay there until they relax. They are about to fall. They're about to throw their hands up and give it up. That's what's about to happen. They're holding on with all they've got. They're trying by the grace of God to carry through with this. They're trying by the help of God to stay faithful. They're trying by the help of God to be what they're called to be here. But the load is too heavy for them alone. They need you. Pray for them. If you sense that rising up and standing, don't, don't kick them out then right there, brothers and sisters. That's when they need you the most. Get in there beside them. If you want to bring them back to where they should be, get up there beside them and say, Brother, I sense that you're in a load, under a load. I sense that you're fighting a battle that you cannot fight alone. Can I walk along with you? 
Don't go up and say, hey, what's bothering you? Can't you tell me? They can't tell you. They can't, they can't break the trust like that. They can't tell you. They just need you beside them. Get up there beside them. Get on your knees. Pray with them. Be there for them. Encourage them. Lift them up. They have spent many prayers for you. Offer a few for them. They need it. And I want to tell you, brothers and sisters, when you can get in there with them like that, they'll, they'll, they'll get their strength back and be able to go. We don't, have, we don't have what it takes, brothers and sisters. We don't. We as leaders do not have what it takes. It's only by the grace of God. And you know, and our brothers and sisters, we need our brothers and sisters. So I encourage you, dear brothers and sisters, be there for your ministry. Be there for each other. Be that love, that support, and that help that they need. Because the battle is great at times. <clears throat> You know, brothers and sisters, if that's the love that we can have for each other, there ain't a battle in this life that we can't win with the power of Jesus Christ. It's not our, it's not us's, it's Jesus Christ. But when we band together in that kind of love, the devil is powerless. He has no power over us because we have Jesus Christ and we have each other. Be that for each other, brothers and sisters. Love each other. Build each other up. Encourage each other. Just, yeah, like I say, just, just get in beside each other. Don't be scared to get dirty. Just get in there and give what you got. <clears throat> Let's turn to 1 Peter 3. And I want to close with this scripture. First Peter 3 verse 8. It says finally. You know how many times is that the feeling of finally. The battle's over. Finally. Be ye all of one mind having compassion one of another. Love as brethren, be pitiful, be courteous. Brothers and sisters, that's the ingredients for a loving church right there. Finally, after you, know, after you fought the battles in life, after you faced the struggles, the heartaches, you have your brethren. You have your sisters. Be ye all of one mind. Be ye all of one mind. One mind. Love. The love of God. Have that in your mind. Be ye one mind. Having compassion one of another. You know, just simply saying, be, con be considerate. Everybody has feelings. Some are tenderer than others. Be compassionate. If it, hurt, if, if it would hurt you, it'll probably hurt somebody else. So be compassionate. Love as brethren. I love that. Love as brethren. You know, that just tells us that the church is supposed to love. It uses that as a description. Love as brethren. Be pitiful and be courteous. Feel the pain of each other. Just feel each other's pain and be courteous. <clears throat> Respect each other. If that is the life that we can live up to, brothers and sisters, and I trust that is the life that you are trying to live up to. I don't think any of us can live that perfectly while we're here, but we can strive for perfection. And if that is what you're striving for, brothers and sisters, God will bless you. And that's what I believe you as a brotherhood here are striving for. Is what we were talking about this morning. So I encourage you continue. Continue continuing on. Don't give up. Even though things may get tough. 
Maybe it seems like the way the going is rough. Keep on. Keep pressing on. Keep your eyes on Jesus Christ and keep pressing on. The reward is ahead. Praise God. With, this, with these thoughts, can we all kneel for prayer at this time? <clears throat> oh, Father, we come to you. We thank you so much for the love that you've given us. And Father, I just pray that you can help us somehow, that we can have that love for each other that you had for us. Just help us that we can just be free of ourselves and love each other. And I pray especially for the congregation here, Lord, may you just bless them in a special way as they live this out. They love each other. Love those that uh, in the neighborhood around the community as they reach out and your love affects the lives around them. I just pray, Father, that all men may know through their love that they are your disciples. I pray especially for the ministry here, Father. May you just bless them, give them courage and strength to continue on in the calling you have called them to. I just pray, Father, that as they continue laboring, for the labor that you can bless them for it and for the members of the church here Father just to <clears throat> bless them in a special way Lord just help us in these last and evil days that we would not gr grow weary in well doing but that we would continue on in the fight run that race that is set before us knowing that when we finish that race we'll hear those blessed words well done thou good and faithful servant enter into the glory of the Lord. I pray that for each one of us here this morning, that we each one can hear those precious, precious words when we finish this race. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> Turn the time back.